Hello, my name is Anouk Charlot. I am a second year PhD student in the University of Strasbourg. First of all, I would like to thank the organizer of this webinar to give me the chance to present my work. Today we are going to talk about the beneficial effect of early time restricted feeding on metabolic disease and the importance of aligning food habits with the circadian clock. In the past few decades, obesity prevalence has considerably increased. In the 1975, 5% of the world population was obese, compared to 13% in 2016. Obesity is defined as an excessive fat accumulation that leads to health complications. The development of obesity is exacerbated by a modern diet rich in sugar and lipids. This type of hypercaloric food promotes hyperglycemia and insulin secretion, that induce fat accumulation in adipose tissue. Adipose tissue, in addition to its storage function, is an important endocrine organ that releases free fatty acids and pro-inflammatory cytokines, which are partly responsible for insulin-resistant and non-alcoholic non fatty liver disease, but it also increases the risk of cardiovascular events. Intermittent fasting refers to the idea of adopting alternating fasting periods characterized by a lack of food consumption and feeding periods during which food may be consumed at libitum. Voluntary abstinence from food has also been used across the human history, especially in religious contexts which such as holy fasting in Ramadan or Lent. It also used as an epilepsy treatment in ancient Rome. Currently, intermittent fasting is becoming increasingly popular because it seems to be an interesting clinical approach in the treatment of several diseases, for example, diabetes, obesity, cancer, or neurodegeneration. Intermittent fasting regroups several approaches with regulation of eating patterns. We can find the 5.2 diets, which is split which split the week into five days of normal dieting and two days of caloric restriction. Another diet is the eat-stop-eat diet, with two days of 24-hour fasting per week. Finally, the classic intermittent fasting is a restriction of the feeding window from 6 to 10 hours each day. Circadian rhythms are driven oscillation of endocrine factor levels during the day that follow the light and night pattern and the feeding fasting pattern. These variations are important to perform physiological processes at the optimal time of the day. Melatonin induces the resting phase and cortisol prepares the body for the activity phase. The other hormones drive modification of glucose and lipid, glucose and lipid metabolism, promoting catabolism with fatty acid oxidation and glycolysis, as for example FGF21, adipolectin or leptin hormone, or anabolism with lipogenesis and glycogenesis, like insulin. Digestion and metabolization of nutrients are more efficient when the food is consumed earlier in the day during the active phase rather than during the resting phase. If we refer to the 24-hour hormone oscillation, we hypothesize that food intake should begin at 8 in the morning after the cortisol peak when the activity phase started and should not end later than 6 p.m. during the ghrelin and insulin peak. Indeed, between 8 in the morning and 4 in the afternoon, FGF21 and the adiponectin are produced and promote fatty acid oxidation, glycolysis and inhibit fat accumulation. The consumption of food should not occur during the insulin peak because it induces fat storage or during the night when leptin is produced. Indeed, leptin normally induces satiety, so we should not consume food at this moment. Thereby, the optimal time for food intake seems to be during the morning and the early afternoon. However, this proposal needs to be confirmed by additional scientific studies carry out in animal study or human protocol. It could be hard to respect our circadian rhythm because of the modern lifestyle. Indeed, industrial revolution lead to considerable changes to human life.
the invention of steam machine during the first industrial revolution lead to optimization of production and a reduction of cost. Electrical lightning invented by Thomas Edison in 1879 had major consequences on the way people walked and lived because they were now able to work at night. The mechanization of agriculture and the invention of fertilizer increased farming production after the Second World War. At the same time, the food industry experienced a boom in the 17s with the arrival of large retailers, household fridge, and the expansion of frozen food markets. Finally, all this revolution led to a new age of globalization in the 21st century with rapid growth of the global economy many faster of means of transport, and the emergence of new technologies such as television, computers, internet, or smartphones. All of these progresses had major consequences on people by inducing changing in the living and working habits and in feeding habits. Modern lifestyle promotes night shift, which is the time of work that happens during the night. Night shift is associated with a higher risk of coronary heart disease and vascular events such as ischemic stroke, for example, in comparison to day work. Modern lifestyle also promotes social jet lag, which is the accumulation of lack of sleep during work and school day and a compensation by extending sleep duration on the weekend. It is associated with higher cardiovascular and diabetes risk factors. Finally, modern lifestyle promotes late-night eating and a consumption of ultra-processed food. It is associated with an increase of, an increased risk of obesity, coronary heart disease, glucose intolerance, and insulin resistance. A solution to reduce the risk of developing metabolic disease could be the implementation of intermittent fasting to realign lifestyle behavior with the biological circadian rhythm. Indeed, we could use the early time restricted feeding where the food intake occurs between 8 in the morning and 6 in the afternoon and the rest of the day is fasting. This type of intermittent fasting induced weight loss and appetite reduction in overweight and obese people. Prediabetic and diabetic patients characterized by a glucose intolerance presented lower insulin levels and a better insulin sensitivity when they had a daily eating window of 8 hours per day. Moreover, early time restricted feeding induced change in cardiovascular markers by decreasing blood pressure and LDL levels. The changing observed among the participants of these studies are beneficial for their metabolic health. A decrease in body weight and a loss of fat mass are associated with an improvement in health-related quality of life and a reduction of obesity risk and complication development. Moreover, it is well known that a decrease in blood pressure and LDL levels is associated with a better cardiovascular health. However, early time restricted feeding has some limits. One of the most restrictive points is the daily eating window to 10 to 6 hours because it can be hard to respect it while maintaining a family, a social or a work life. Indeed, dinner is actually the most important meal in family environment. It facilitates communication between family members and favors social-emotional development and mental health. Therefore, following a different feeding pattern than the entourage can restrain social and family development and can drive to isolation, loneliness or depression. Another limit of intermittent fasting is the lack of protocol standardization. There is no consensus about the ideal timing for eating and fasting pattern or the optimal duration of each window. Studies use different duration for the feeding period from 8 to 10 hours and recommend diverse time slots for time restricting feeding. In conclusion, it is important to keep in mind that the way that people eat is essential for metabolic health. When food habits don't match with the circadian clock, they increase the risk of obesity, cardiovascular disorders, and diabetes. The solution could be practicing a time-restricted fasting where eating window match with the circadian rhythm, 
because it could improve metabolic health. Thank you for your attention. If you want to know more about the circadian clocks and the intermittent fasting, I invite you to read our article published in Nutrient.